Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? We are on StreamYard today because we wanted to play you a clip. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not entirely sure whether the quality of the image is better or worse when we're on StreamYard. It looks worse to me sometimes, but some people say it's better. Morning, everyone. Katie Kay, Ellery Jones, Amanda Roach, Bev Hartnell. Morning, Hi. everyone. I might have to go because I've got the doctor ringing me, so I might have to rush off. And but I'll be back. It'll only be a minute or two. Say it like say it like Arnold Schwarzenegger. What does that? What does he I'll say? I'll be back. I'll be back. I think it's quite good. Actually. I'll be back. I'll be back. Um, what was the? Get to the chopper. No. What was now. The, no. What's his Sorry. famous thing? He says. I'll be back. No. In another. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. What is it that Arnold Schwarzenegger says? Hasta la vista. Ah, baby. Why did your baby come out like that? Hasta la vista, baby. That's, that's, not, he how, that's not how he says it. He's not Mexican. No, but that's Hasta he, la vista. No, that's how he... I wasn't doing a Mexican accent. That's, that's how he says it. Yeah. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back. I'll Bev be Arnold, back. Like, I'll be back. That's his... Uh, do you remember, in the, the, do you remember in the pandemic when he did that video and there was a horse in his, his kitchen? His donkey, wasn't it? A donkey? A donkey or a mule? I, I mean, I remember at that point thinking... Put the cookie down. <laughs> oh, my God, we really have gone mad. Arnold Schwarzenegger is telling us what to do about the thingy, about the pandemic. I loved and it. And he's got a donkey. In his, oh, I loved it. I loved, I loved it. it. But just when we thought it couldn't get any, any more crazier. bizarre, then we had him talking from his kitchen with a donkey. And then did you see, he? we did the story, he recently filled a pothole because he, yeah. was, in, he was incandescent and then discovered the next day he filled the wrong hole. Did he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that bit he, of the story. He filled a sort of a gas pipe engineering uh, hole that was going to be filled. Um, Sophia Lopez from Instagram to YouTube. Love it. It's like social media surfing here, guys. Later, yeah. we're going to be on TikTok. After that, we're going to be on Snapchat. And after that, we're going to be on Real Meat. We're, so we're Real actually Beat. never going to be on TikTok because our kids made us sign a contract that we would never go on TikTok. Mm. I haven't quite worked out what that's about. Uh, Ellie Denning, quick thank you, Matt. Had the courage to go to the docs. Finally been referred for my ADHD assessment. Your videos have really helped me and my confidence to ask for help. So oh, thank you. Oh, I'm pleased about that. Thank Lee Dorrance, sending you a big hug, mate. How are you? Hope you're well. Uh, hope you're okay. Um, I'm actually going to be answering an ADHD question that's been sent into the agony aunt and uncle. Um, uh, what is it? I don't know. Seems <laughs> to live. Podcast. No, yeah, so we're going to be recording that today. So that will go up tonight, Ellie. So um, there will be a bit of discussion about ADHD on that. Yeah. Um, so good morning, everyone. So we've got a few interesting things here today. Uh, we've got how the C word uh, for someone lost them their job. I thought, yeah, I, I like this. The C word. You know what the C word is? The C you next Tuesday word. Croissant. Oh, I thought it was croissant. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to talk about vigilanteism because I was kind of really, sometimes I can't work out why I've been hooked by a story. And then I sort of sit with it and I sort of think, well, maybe if I've been hooked, someone else will be. But this is the story of a vigilante father and son who helped him, who murdered a thief. And I wanted to share with you the footage of him after the event. This was something I, I'm, uh, called Splitwise. I, I, you know, the, 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 I presume this came from the horror of having to split a bill. Is that with friends or? Yeah, so this is just quite a funny story, I thought, yeah, so, because I thought it was, I would love the way it was written as well. It was just yeah. like, where are we going to end up with this? Yeah, so we're yeah. going to have a chat about that. Splitting bills with friends on holiday and how it can completely ruin a friendship group. Well, I think splitting bills in general can. Mm -hmm. um, Fogo. Fear of going on holiday. I thought that was quite fun. And if we've got time, we'll, we'll just scoot quickly through the Spotify playlist for the coronation celebrations. Yes, the Department of Culture and Media has uploaded its own playlist for the coronation. And of course, the proclaimers aren't there. <laughs> so, um, so what should we start with? Should we start with the C word? Yeah. I think we should start with, I thought that was something on your forehead. Let's start with the C word. Anyone here deeply offended when you hear the C word. I would do a poll, but I'm on the wrong page. I'm on a different... Let, let me see if I can try and do uh, a poll. I Tell mean, us your thoughts on the C so word. So, me and the C word. Okay, yeah. so I really hate the fact that a part of a female body that is really quite an extraordinary piece of kit is deemed the most terrible thing you can say to somebody. So we've spoken about this before on here, haven't we? Somebody actually said, last time we were chatting about this, 
what are, what if it is why it's deemed such a terrible thing to say is because it is a sacred piece of kit and it shouldn't be thrown around as a vicious well as an insult I think that was, I remember when I was younger, my mum, the whole feminist movement and everything like that, not that I ever used the C word, I don't know what the bloody word was, but um, I do remember there being, it was really odd, I couldn't work it out, there was a moment where it was really wrong to use it, and it was considered disrespectful and abusive and unkind and did it, and then there was a moment of reclaiming it. I, I, I'd like to know what you think, guys, because I do have a need to reclaim these words because I think a lot of swearing is rooted in quite misogynistic, in quite a misogynistic way. Mm. Disgust. I mean, if you actually think of the C word, you know, where, li where life emerges from, the human race emerges from, and yet it's the most disgusting, terrible thing you can say. And I'll go as far as this, I'm going to be extreme feminist now. I think it's because deep rooted, I think men are terrified of women and our enormous, extraordinary power. I was going to say enormous something else. <laughs> um, I, th I think you're right. I think men, it, it, you only have to look at the underlying, Reese, you might, you might jump with this. Uh, you, you only have to look at some of the underlying themes in horror films to know that men are deeply, deeply disturbed and scared by, not in a it's literal power. sense, but in a sort of existential sense by women's ability to recreate life. I, you know, and I think, I think the, they're jealous. Well, and I also think that there's fear because, of course, one has to do a certain thing often in order to, to for that to happen. And so there's you're having to engage with it. And I think for a lot of men, the, I, I just think there are two things about these because the, the equivalent is C O C K, isn't it? I, mean, I don't know why we're sort of mincing our words, but cock, we say cock. Isn't it weird that what is the equivalent for men when you use the word cock in language or in social situations? It's almost show offy. Yeah, cock Where, of the walk, cock of the heap. Wasn't necessarily anything about it. even saying you cock. There's something not offensive about it because cocks are outward. But then, well, it's also whenever you use chicken. the c, well, what, is it is it sexism that we can't use the c u n t word? Yeah, Elliot, thank you. If you call someone a cock, it's jokey. More like you idiot. I mean, I, yeah, I think the thing is when the c word is used, it's used with such viciousness, mm. such hate, such anger that it has become. It's not really the word or really the piece of kit. It's about the hate behind that word, isn't mm, it? Mm. Um, I was, I'm trying to think of other words that I've thought of that have been really misogynistic. I can't think now, but... Um, Some people use it too often, says Elspop. I think it shows a lack of intelligence. Well, yeah. I mean, absolutely. And I think not just that word, just, just, just any... It's really strange. Lisa said to me the other day, I'm really trying to cut down on my swearing. I went, oh, shame. please don't. <laughs> and she went, no, I've got to. I said, oh, no, don't, because I love your swearing. She said, oh, but it sounds so awful. I said, listen, some people it does. It's really weird. Like, I don't like it when my sister swears. When Dina swears, I don't like it. You don't like it if I do it too much. No, I don't like it on you at all. No, but, but Lisa, I, do it all the time. I know, and I say to you all the time, but the girls love it when I swear. They do. They, they said, Dad, I think you might have that opinion. They've said it. Don't do this. You're, I think you show off a bit when you swear. You're trying to. I mean, gaslight's too strong a word, but you're trying to kind of <laughs> nudge me down a route where I think I can't say. Nudge you down what bloody route? I'm just told you I don't swear. like it. I'm not if nudging you. I didn't swear. This isn't this me nudging. A huge I am not, cornerstone of this channel I, is swearing and causing upset. I am not nudging. I am telling. This is not a nudge. Oh, I hate this it. This is when a you straight. Tell. Oh. No. I don't, I mean, sometimes, yeah, it's fine. But sometimes it's so weird, isn't it? It just can be the slightest difference in the way that somebody swears. Like, in our business, like, actors, oh, my God, they swear. There is so much swearing. So when I first came, moved into factual, like, presenting, and I came from the acting world, like, swear, and it was like, God, it was no, I suddenly felt aware that I was swearing, which I'd never, I'd never felt aware of it before. Mm. And I still get shocked when people get shocked when I swear. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm trying to be so much more mindful of it because I realise that to a lot of people it is offensive and they don't like it and it feels violent almost. You know what I mean? Mm. So okay, I, it, I am a terrible, I mean, I'm just as bad as you, Mark. I swear way too much. But it's I'm all right if you, Lisa does it. No, but this is what I'm saying. When Lisa swears, it just makes me laugh. 
Well, maybe Denise me swear and makes other people off, just not you. No, no, I was just, I was only talking for me. Calm down. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's just like take I, it off. You take, remove swearing, and I can't. I no, can't. No, no, no. I'm exist. just saying for me, I don't like it when you swear too much. Right. But, but like Denise Welsh, I love it when she swears. She's right. just funny. She's just she? really. It's just she's not. She's not necessarily trying to be funny, but it's just. Yeah. You know, I was some Creative people away there say, oh, for fuck's sake, you know, for fuck's sake. I find that quite funny. Flo- swearing when swearing used, with flourish. Flourish. I don't like it when it's like, okay. No, Ugh. I agree with that. I don't, it, it grates on me. I, I least like it in myself when I'm driving and it's aimed at something. I hate it when you're driving and you swear. Yeah. And the kids do. Yeah. No, I I, I, I granted on that. Um, Misha- but I always feel like I've got no right to say anything when anyone's driving and swearing the whole time. Because I don't drive, so but I really hate it because it makes you feel, as the passenger, it makes you feel a bit unsafe, anxious. Yeah, mm, yeah. yeah no, I agree. Michelle Porter, do you both remember when you said it by accident, Mark, on the live, the c word? I do, I do. I think it was like I don't. I do. I, I and I had to immediately put my hands over my mouth. I thought it felt terrible. Um, you do know the only because of what people would have said. I mean, I've said this before, but you know the phrase "you burke" comes from Berkshire Hunt which is what got me slime for C-U-N-T. And so if you can, when my nanny used to call me a Burke, she was actually calling me a C-U-N-T mm. indirectly. Um, but someone else here, Nick Nick, I think, said uh, it used to be a word that meant friend. Is that right? Did it? Uh, yeah, or, or, or best friend or something like that. Is that what I think Nick Nick, is that what you said? Uh, Lee Durant, I love it when someone swears on live TV. Yeah, it's always fun, isn't it, watching it? The, yeah, watching the Linda penny. Robson. Yeah, watching the penny drop. Um, and Illy, I did once... By accident, they said to me I swore, but I didn't. They hadn't said to me action, and it was live, and I was coming live from the prison, and I said bollocks. Right. But um, it's very interesting. Is when I my first ever episode of Loose Women, which was my first ever live TV thing. Um, I'd done EastEnders and all of that beforehand, but we, I was told, oh, you do know, like if you swear on daytime television. So this is 25 years ago. You're finished. You're finished. You don't yeah. work again. Yeah. Now people do get away with it. but yeah. And so I think that just went so deep in my brain and I've just never done yeah, it. Maybe. Uh, do you use the C word? A quarter of you do, uh, three quarters of you don't. Interesting. Okay. Well, we have individually on certain massive rails, we've said it. You've said it to me, I've said it no, to I you. No, I haven't. You call me a lot in rails. You have said it to no, me and I've said it to you. You have called me a a Mark. lot in rails. Even my mother called me at once, which was horrible. That was really stuck with me, Mark. Um, especially as you campaigned for years against using it. That, that was what was particularly uh, upsetting. Um, okay, so that's the, the C word. Um, let's talk about vigilantism for a minute. This story is the story of, uh, let me give you context. Um, this is, I'm going to show you some body cam footage in a, in a minute, which shows the moment a vigilante father Do we need to give uh, any warnings, was arrested. Yeah, we don't see any violence. Mm-hmm. Uh, it shows the moment a vigilante father was arrested after having killed a thief. Um, the, person, mm-hmm. the person who's arrested, David King, was armed with a dagger. He left his home uh, with his son after they saw a thief trying car doors around their estate. So this wasn't... Bear they weren't. Or... So they weren't being uh, burgled. Yeah. They weren't being attacked. And the guy had actually moved away, hadn't he'd he? Moved, so they weren't moved running on. after yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was not like, God, you're at my car, adrenaline pumping, yeah, go out. Yeah. This was like thought about, yeah. premeditated. Yeah. So yeah. the thief was was then stabbed by a dagger, sliced across the knee by the sword in oh the early hours God. of 20, June twentieth, twenty twenty one, and uh, v- this this vigilante behaviour. Anyway. I want to know. I want to know what you think as you watch this because I don't know. It just intrigued me. Obviously, they've they've been charged. Uh, the father has been sentenced to twenty two years in prison, and the son has been sentenced to nineteen years in prison. Um, so let's just have a, a look at this and see what. You... Okay. Um, uh, just before one o'clock. Yeah. The camera alarm went off. Okay. Uh, and um, there was somebody in the drive trying car doors. Yeah. Okay. Um, then 
Um, I don't know how long ago it is now, about 10 minutes ago, the alarm went off again. Yeah. So I quickly threw on my clothes, came out and found found a guy uh, trying car doors just here, I'll show you. Okay. He was he was in between those two grey cars there. Right, okay. Trying a car door handle. Yeah. And I shouted at him, you know, um, what what you what you doing? Yeah. I said, I know what you're up to. Yeah. And he and he came towards me um, and said, No mate, I'm just looking for a light, got a lighter, got a lighter. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and I said, stay, I said, stay there. He, this went on a, a minute or so. Yeah, yeah. He whacked his bike into me, which is how I got that bruise. Okay. So he was like, let's move a bike. And I, I stood where you are. And, he's, yeah. and he was just going, no, mate, no, mate. And it went like that to right. try and get away. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I had a knife in my hand. And then he ran at me. Okay. Right. And then, and then he held himself, he held himself there. Okay. And then he, he argued for a bit. And he, he seemed to be play acting a bit, if I'm honest. Okay. And then run off. What's what's your name? David King. David, just go and stand over there for me a minute, David. I'm just going to make a call, all right? Based on what's happened, okay, a man has just been around, found around the corner with serious injuries to his chest, okay? Right. Okay. And for that reason, I'm going to be arresting you, okay, on suspicion of grievous bodily harm with intent, okay? So, do you mind if I go change? Um, I haven't I'd, got any underpants not the moment, on the okay. rent. Not, not, not at the moment, mate. We'll, we'll I'd like just to just close if Seriously. you need to. But we need I've got to... my house keys here. Can I at least uh, just give them to my wife? Keep your hands out your pockets. Okay. Just... Oh, hey, listen, come on. Listen. Mate, I know. just hold on a minute. Look, okay, let, let me finish and let me explain things. Okay. This is quite a serious offence. Okay. I need you to stay in the clothes that you're in. Okay. For evidential purposes, okay? Does that make sense? Well, yeah, but the bit that doesn't make okay. sense is the fact that somebody's tried to... Just sleep. let my, no, let my let colleague me finish. finish. Right, okay. Yeah. You are remain on the caution, okay? So I'll repeat that. You do not. You don't have to say anything, but it may have a defence. If you do not mention, when questioned, something which you may later rely on in court. Yeah. Anything you do, say maybe give an evidence, okay? David, where is the knife? It's at home. Whereabouts? It's in the kitchen. In the kitchen? Whereabouts in the kitchen? On the worktop. On the worktop. Okay, how big is it? It's like a steak knife. Oh, all Hello? Hello mate, you alright? Is it just yourself here? Yes. Okay, can I come in please? Uh, do you have a warrant? I don't need a warrant. Yeah. Okay, essentially an incident has happened. Just take your hands out of your pockets for me mate. An incident has happened. Yeah. Just round the corner involving a David King. I've just been informed he lives here. Right. And that incident he's just been arrested for, okay? And for that reason I need to come in because this potentially is a crime scene. Okay? So for that reason I'm going to come in. If you don't let me in, Okay, I could arrest you for obstruct police. Does that make sense? Just about. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you. So. Wow, so he's saying that the guy did cycle towards him. Mm. My God. But they had a huge, uh, you know, they had a huge sword like machete. I was going to say, it says in yeah. the piece that I read yeah. that it was a sword. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Edward King, the 20 year old, had grabbed a two foot long sword after he saw the thief on CCTV. Um, so, you know. Is this the thief? Yeah. Vigilante behavior. So, you know, it, it just made me wonder about, you know, there are many of these stories that come up about, like, do you remember the farmer of when someone invade your property and you know i often think about it you, you think what would i do if someone came into the house and you're going to protect exactly you're going to protect your family there's still even the potential that if you disable someone who's in your mm. house house you know you say i don't know you hit them with something and they're on the floor at that point if you carried on mm. and did something to them and perhaps killed them you would be charged yeah. with something so it was that terrible case we were all so upset about, wasn't there, for that man? Mm. <gasps> Who's this, people had come around to steal the bike, they'd come in the house, their Absolutely. new baby was there, and he was put away. But then there's the argument of how was... do you know, as a potential victim, yeah. um, how, you know, how much you have to protect yourself? I mean, the amount of times I've been out in a situation in a public place has developed really quickly, and you get that animalistic fear that mm. kicks in, and you're thinking, well, this is this is... You know, what's the flee or flight, flight, or, flight, flight, flight or flight, fight or flight, <laughs> fight or flight, and yeah. or, or just self protect and flight. Now, this clearly and apparently the the story runs that when the judge was summing up and was sentencing them, uh, the judge said that both men went out with the As intention of hunting down Mr. Charles mm. and causing him real harm. 
I mean, he, he was... said that a message thread somewhere on social media indicated yeah. that the men thought they needed the likes so of Charles, Charles Bronson to bring justice back to the streets. So, so this guy, nobody's life was in danger. He wasn't threatening mm. anybody. He wasn't in anybody's home. Yes, mm. he was a thief and that bloody annoying. And if cars have been being stolen, I can understand all that. And the frustration that police do, fuck all for you. Mm. Your car is stolen. People are fed up. People mm. are fed up of nothing seemingly to be done. But that, for me, yeah. is just... And the fact that they're both just so cool about it. That's the other bit that kind I mean, of strikes me, yeah, is is this... We have stereotypical ideas of who can kill and who does kill. And killing in self-defence, we have stereotypical ideas of that and stereotypical ideas of who kills. But when you're presented with someone who just looks and sounds so everyday and ordinary and matter-of-fact yeah. about what he's done... I mean, he potentially obviously didn't realize that he'd killed the man necessarily at that point but they'd gone out with the intent of causing huge harm to someone yeah um, i mean he it, you know he was a thief he shouldn't have been doing what he was doing for sure all of that but you but 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 you just can't have people running out with swords hmm. i mean natalie smith they should have called the police and let them deal with it exactly and you know that is that's you know that's a that's a real sentence that mm-hmm. 20 20 20. 22 years for one, and the, ni- the younger one got 19 years. I mean, does anyone think yeah. they behaved, re- not reasonably, but does anyone think that was too harsh a sentence for them? The man's dead. No, no, I know, I know. But no. I think some people feel that any form of crime being, um, yeah, he did die. Yeah, Any cr- kind of crime being uh, enacted deserves some kind of vengeance. I mean, there was, there was... Um... The sword went went into his heart, I think, mm, didn't it? And mm. and then a slash leg as well. Mm. For me, that is yeah. yeah. The, the thief died. The thief now, died. if somebody had come into the house, mm. you know, like that poor couple. Do you remember the? And everyone was like trying to um, crowdfund mm. to get him out because it was just oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, awful, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. And then there was another case last year where. This guy and his wife were in there <laughs> watching telly and suddenly their doors were just like smashed in. A gang came mm, in mm. and they had like, oh, I can't remember. Anyway, he defends himself. He was taken off. But th- this gang had just got the wrong house. Mm, he mm. wasn't the dealer that they thought he was. Mm. Now, how can you put a person inside for that? Andrew Crash, the thief won't, won't ever steal again. No, he's dead. Um, yeah. He died of his wounds. Yeah, uh, they deserve the sentence. Right. Paul O'Brien. That is not right. Uh, Donnie Harvey, my friend, walked past a lad in her family home kitchen, said hello, and went into the lounge and asked her brothers whose mate it was. It wasn't a mate; it was a burglar. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's so chilling, isn't it? So chilling. Wow. So yeah, no, it, there was just something about it. It was the sort of everyday the ordinariness. ordinariness. Yeah, I just went down there, and yeah. then I went. Yeah, then he came towards me, yeah. and I but oh come on! Like he couldn't believe he was going to be arrested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah quite something. Okay, so big, big unsegued gear change. Splitwise, what is splitwise? Well, it seems split. Well, do any of you know about splitwise? You is, can go back because I know this story. Uh, is it some kind of app? Has, has anyone ever used it? Yeah, it's an app. And when I first saw about this, I thought, oh, God, this would be really good if you were going on a girl's holiday. Mm. And um, what it does is it Hi, just. Hi, Jill Taylor. So you'll go, in, you'll go in for a meal and then it, it sort of breaks up what everybody owes, right. and then you get messaged for your amount. Right. So there's no one person having to message for people to pay back. So it's a bit like a Go Henry card but for, for, for girlfriends, uh, which top, well, not just girlfriends, boyfriends, I'm not being sexist, girlfriends or boyfriends, oh, not even boy, whoever, <laughs> groups of people who want to split bills. No, right? I'd never heard of it either. So it's a way of splitting bills if you're away on holiday or I suppose in any situation. Mm. Anyway, this, this, this woman who was reviewing it said, you know, this group of friends thought, oh, my God, this is going to take all the stress out of everything. But it was a total <laughs> nightmare well, and then. nearly broke up all the friendships. Apparently, people were adding in that they paid when they hadn't paid and all oh, this. Right. And she said, in the end, she said, right. it was so bizarre because none of us are tight and none of us have ever had a problem with paying back. And it made me think about how we are just so obsessed with constantly trying to find new ways to make our lives easier. Yes. You know, with yeah. the data that we gather. And with yeah. the, but actually, we're just making it more complicated all the time. 
I mean, in the end, people were, were, were arguing about the 26 pence that somebody hadn't paid in, which before would have been, you know, nothing. I mean, there is nothing more annoying, is there, than people that sit there go, either people that don't want to help out, like you kind of know some, you know, within a group, sometimes people are splitting a bill is going to be really hard for them. And they might have sat there and just had one meal and like no alcohol because they want to pay less for mm. the bill. We were talking about this the other day at work, actually, and a number of people were saying that they've actually stopped seeing certain people because of the way that they want to split bills and because it leaves such a nasty taste in their mouth afterwards. But I do think there is an issue because there are a lot of people in groups, there are huge discrepancies and some people really can't afford to Well, that's what um, I mean. So if somebody's going, oh, I'm not having any alcohol mm -hmm. and I'm just going to have a prawn starter, mm -hmm. you would pick up that maybe it's a bit difficult for them to pay. But maybe so that you person would go, wants that's the self-respect to pay for their, for their stuff, but they, yeah, don't, they don't want to have exactly. to be sort of, you know, hijacked by, by I mean, split points. And I hate noise. that when people go, no, 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 we're just going to all split it. Like I'm, I'm one that takes on the bill a lot because I hate anyone mm. feeling like they've got to pay. But when you watch other people like say, no, no, we've got to split it all, and they've been drinking loads of alcohol. Mm. I mean, it's it's not fair. And yeah. you can see a person struggling to pay it. Oh, I just I find it also cringe. Someone here uh, suggested uh, or says that they they create a sort of kitty. Do you have that word kitty? The kitty. Yeah, that's kitty. what Dina does when she goes um, on holiday. A kitty, and and exactly. I think I, and I think if you're good. I don't know, for me, the bit that confuses me a little bit is that if you're a group of friends and you pop money in the kitty and at the front end, you sort of all acknowledge each other's different capacities to afford this, that or the other. If as a group of friends, you're saying we put in what we can afford, you chuck it all in and then you sign off on any kind of resentment or issue. You just have to. You go, that's the kitty. That's what we're going to spend. And OK, there might be a bigger drinker in the group or whatever. I, think you, have what to have, I think you have to have a separate drink kitty wow. because i don't see why people that don't drink should be punished so if you're away with a group and there's like you know yeah, even well, just one person just have a drink kitty you can mm -hmm. always get a bill separate for the drink mm. you can well ah holly mccready really good point i can i just say with the exception of a couple of places we know i am forever staggered at the outrageous price they make cocktail, they sell cocktails for. It is an absolute it's shambolic shot. I mean, alcohol has become so expensive anyway, but this idea that you prettify and tittify a drink to some extent. Well, everything's become expensive. Yeah, Lemons, yeah, but, limes, no, coconut You're milk. looking at like £18. Yeah, but how does it suddenly go from it. six? No, no, I'm sorry. None of those, none of those essences or a glacé cherry or a... Oh, you're talking about cheap cocktails. Well, just nice any cocktail. cocktail. It, it, for some reason, it's a kind of green light to pop the price up. And Holly McCready here says, I hate rounds for this reason. Somebody like me would have a few soft drinks and my friends would have five cocktails each, which... But they're not making has... you buy a round when you're having a soft drink. But when you're out with That's friends, it, sometimes it is a case of, oh, it's your round. It's your well, round. but you can't have a person that's not drinking by... I mean... Oh, Don't get me wrong, big, like, like if one. you can afford it, then yeah. it's like, oh, I'm just buying you a drink. It's not so that you buy one back. But let's face it, most people, when they're buying rounds, when you're at that age group, when you're buying rounds, it's because everybody's watching their, their money. There we go. Lee Darren I went to the O2 last week. It was two cocktails for 22 quid. I mean, it's just, it's just ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. Laura Dion, my mum is a pensioner on low income and goes out with quite a well-off sister. Sister always says split the bill in half when she's oh, the one that has more, and I don't like no, it. Yeah, can't no. stand it. I think, I, I think you're right. I think you've you've really hit the nail on the head with so many things that develop now is that they, they try and develop some kind of hack or, life or, you know, or app to kind of fix a so-called... There's a there's commerce and money to be made in creating new dilemmas to then theoretically fix. But that said, I do think there are issues. There are issues around people who really can't afford to buy around to buy around. And again, I think it's like we're getting more and more scared of communicating. So let's give yeah. something where we don't have to communicate. Was actually, you know, if before any rows start, like, God, when I was younger, if only I'd been this wise. But if I was my age, if I went back to the age where I was going away with people and we were splitting, what I would say now is go, right, guys, 
how often does this sort of thing end up in a row? Everyone say, what is the thing that you hate about when there's a kitty? Mm. So you have the conversation beforehand. Then it's all out there. And I go, right, okay, well, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. We're going to have a separate kitty for booze. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then that's communicating with the group. Mm. Mm. I, I think love this story, though, because they were a fantastic group of friends. That got yeah, they, they all began to fall out. I think there's almost a film-like game night or yes, tag in it, split isn't wise. there? Yeah, split, yeah. split. Um, what was I going to say? I, there is another aspect to this as well, where if someone at the table says, no, 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 I'm sorry, it's just looking. I know, it's just looking. Oh, right, oh, sorry. It, it, it's someone saying, it's uh, it's all right, I'm going to get this. That create, let's say you're on holiday and the first meal out, someone goes, yeah, no, 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 absolutely, I can't stand splitting bills. No, oh, no, 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 let me. Some people in that group will be hijacked on that and, and will be like, but I can't afford to do the same back. I can't afford it. And so that huge so-called gesture of generosity becomes hugely pressurizing and intimidating well, I've got, for someone I've else. got friends that obviously I earn more than they do. And when we go somewhere really nice, and, and, and what I love about my friends is, the friends that I do this with, they get they get it. I say, oh, just let me pay yeah, 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 yeah. I said, because like my job, is not as worthy as your job, right? Mm. You do a much better fucking job in the world than I do. I can't tell you and I just talk shit. You know, you do this, you do that with certain friends of mine. And and it's not fair that the world is like this mm. with how we pay mm. each other. Mm. So I said, and it makes me happy. And I think when you've had good fortune, it's good to share it. And they go, Chip, well, thanks, Nath. Mm. And it's so easy and it's so nice. Mm. And 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 it's also true. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, like, this woman whose sister is more well-off than your mum. I mean, that's... I, I think, unless you share what you've got, I don't think you have a good life. I really do. My, my dad taught us that from very young, and I think that was my because my dad was a bedwin. Someone, someone who just said they had lunch <laughs> with millionaires and they asked to split the bill. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Horrible. There you, there you go. I know that kind of Lee, fucker. Lee Durren, I hate when you buy round uh round buy and around and you're the one buying when everyone is drunk and they add shots to the to the rounds Jesus yeah I mean, it's, it's outrageous isn't it um, i ask not to be treated and tell them that oh helen father she doesn't like to be treated <laughs> yeah well i mean and you know being treated can in, in and of itself create all sorts of kind of you know stress if you're on holiday and stuff my, like that my dad was always sort of very spiritual about this you know when you think that my dad arrived in this country with 40 quid mm. And has never, 50 quid actually, and has ne never claimed any benefits, never got any help or anything. And he arrived here literally with that and a, and a little suitcase. And a knapsack. <laughs> and yet he, he comes from a culture which is what you have, you share. Mm. And he always, he would tell us these stories of, you know, when the Bedouins would arrive, they'd been traveling maybe for mm. weeks or months. They would arrive, they said, you knew that they would be so thirsty and so hungry, and you might not have much, but as they arrived, whatever you had, you would put out. Mm. And he said, you know, you would sit, and everyone would sit for ages before they took a bite or before mm. they took a trip. And it would be like small, but he used to tell us these stories when we were sitting like this, going, I was going to say, yeah. as like teenagers, and you. And it was that thing of if you give, more comes back to you anyway. Whereas if you mm. think of Scrooge, think mm. of a Christmas carol. But your dad always, whenever your dad talks about culturally about his 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 background and where he came from, it's always it's share. It's all about sharing. But no one would call it communism or socialism. There's always a no. dirty word. No, but there's a dirty mm. word in the West applied to that kind of thing, isn't mm. it? So, um, well, he just doesn't. No, he. It was just like he wanted to provide a good home and all of those things for his family, but his drive wasn't how much money he could make and how he could save it mm, mm. and i think that's why he's had a good life and here he is nearly 90. okay the proclaimers <laughs> the government we're gonna... <laughs> hey, hey, hey. i can march ten thousand. so they've been knocked off the playlist because they have anti-monarchical <laughs> views and they're anti-monarchy anti-royalist mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff fair enough but they, which is fair enough and, and but this story i just thought it was remarkable well, remarkable but i just quite like the way in which the department for digital culture media and sport have gone on to spotify and created a coronation celebration playlist now anyone with teenagers or young adults will know spotify playlists are absolutely sort of totemic religious 
not to be tampered with. Every now and then I'll get a message from one of the girls somewhere saying, Dad, I'm about to lose my playlist. And it's like nothing could be more serious. Your playlist tells you everything about who you are, what you are, where you're sat within your social circle and all that kind of stuff. So I thought... Well, don't look at mine. It's chaos. Well, no, yours is... Yeah, yours is diabolical. So anyway, so what is on the Coronation's playlist? What, what could King Charles be listening to on his AirPods whilst he's being anointed? Um, so we've got things like Daddy Cool by Bonnie. Daddy. Daddy, Daddy Cool. cool. I, I just have to say Daddy. the words. Daddy cool, love that one. Let's dance. Let's, let's dance. dance. Let's put do, on a red and, and do dance something. The blues. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Uh, Mr. Blue Sky. Mm -hmm, Mr. Blue Sky. <laughs> Slave to the rhythm. Slave to the to rhythm. The rhythm. Oh, hang on, jump up. We've got. We're running up that road. Yeah. We're running, We're up, running that up that hill. Is it me? What else? So cool and you we know. Wow. It's me. It's me. I'm Kathy and I'm old now. You're old now. So cool. <laughs> uh, a couple of others. I love our house in, in the, the middle, middle of our street. street. Our oh, house. look. Gold by Spandau Ballet. Gold. Ooh. <laughs> da, 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 da. Um, and that's it. Well, there's a few others. Waterloo Sunset green, by the green Kings. Grass of Kings. Home. Green Green Grass of Home by Tom Jones. Jeff Beck green, and Rod Stewart. Green. People get ready. I must remember to listen to Tom Jones. You see, since I've been married and since I've had children, I just don't ever listen to my music because anything I put out, everyone goes, oh, God. I love Dolly Parton. I love Tom Jones. I love Earth, Wind and Fire. Mm. I love... Let's um, groove tonight. I I love, and they all just go, oh my, oh, I'll turn it off. And I never, I haven't played music my whole marriage. But the the big, you haven't played music? Not out music. loud. No. Well, just listen I used to, to have, neither do I. I, used I play to have Aretha hardly Franklin any music anymore. Blasting every morning. I used to, be, I used to have jazz. I used to have dance. It's not just you. But I've never said you turn that off. I've never I've, said you turn it off. No, you do go, oh God, not to. Oh, well, so when I put on Dolly Parton tomorrow, this colour of many colours that my mum and make me. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah, but you, I don't know. Yeah, all right. Fair also, fair these bloody things one Bluetooth connects to, I have never been able to play a tune from here through that. Okay. Well, I what, want a record player. We've got one. No, I don't want one a of the, one of I the, want a CD player. And one of the most unusual uh, songs, before we go on the, on the playlist, is Scratching My Scrotum by Throbbing Gristle. Oh, God. Can you believe that? Scratching my scrotum by throbbing thing? gristle. I, I mean, I'm astonished that they've even allowed those words on there. We've so, got to go, guys. So, do you want to say? Do, do you want to do your thing where you wrap up? What do I wrap up? Subscribe to the channel. Oh yeah! Please hit the subscribe button and notification. the notification bell.